milk. <laughs> we have milk. Priority. Hello, we're at ABC Audio Works now with a very well lit Alex by Hard Cook. I'm exposed now, but. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, yeah, so we're just setting up the kit now to record. It's very mic'd everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Perfectly the pair, though. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's our hot tip to you today the Behringer C2, quite possibly the best microphone when in the people, world. When people say bad things about Behringer, I get angry. No, absolutely. It's same. Good, yeah, it's superb. I think. Dating back to when we first recorded with each other, the Behringer C2 has been a, a mainstay in our uh, recording set. We've probably used it on every single session we've ever done in some capacity. Well, there we go. Yeah, so what, what kit are you going to have me use today then? This, uh, it's a 1960 something Slingerland. Wow. Um, I mean, look at it. Sparkle. I have got the matching snare, but I don't think it's right for what we're doing. Well, there we go. So I'm letting Alex make a couple of decisions on that in terms of the drum setup. And I think he's going to coach me through the session because. Uh, Alex knows very well now that I am not a drummer, um, so <laughs> so rather than um, rather than letting him jump on the kit, which to me is the easy option because you do this in like ten minutes flat, um, we'll uh, we'll have me have a, a crack at this. So that ironically, be... I've got you a more expensive and prestigious gear out than most of the drummers in bands that I record. Which well, there we go. So uh, that's what you get. That's what loyalty gets yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> for being a mate. <laughs> So how long do you reckon I actually have to leave this before it? I don't know, I didn't mind that it were going soggy and I couldn't restrain <laughs> myself, so I reckon you might be nearly there. I can feel heat coming through yeah, it, actually. Yeah. That's quite remarkable. The magic of the stroop, mate. <laughs> the Dutch secret, they'll never release it. That's it. The internet now knows, though. Mm. That's the beautiful thing about it. Choco mill. Yeah, so that's it, choco mill. 24.99 delivered to your door. Really? How many did you buy? 24. What cans of it? Mm-hmm. Oh, right, decent. That's, that's pretty good, actually. You can get the bottles as well. The glass bottles and the plastic bottles. But it works out more expensive. Right, okay. And are they slightly higher capacity? They're all the same, I think. Oh, right. I decent. don't know, though. Do some research, but I think they're all the same. You know, oh, I can feel the heat on that. Look at that. Oh. What are you saying? We all dip it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that's a bit of a personal question. <laughs> I'll have a dip sometime. Every now and then. Don't mind a dip. I think we had a good session there, actually. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Swung some bit. When you think about it, it's the amount of stuff that we've created in this studio over the years. You know, it's quite funny that we've, this is the first time we've done it this way around. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was weird being on that side of the class. You know, like my backup plan, if this didn't work, was just to sub you in and never tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, I'm so good. <laughs> 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 really come on, yeah. <laughs> when you've been practicing, it just happened. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hello! <laughs> now remember, you were making a bacon sandwich in an apron. Hi, I'm on this part cook, and this is ABC Studios meal time. Yeah. That was classic over there. Classic Abe's. And then John kept getting the camera. I think John was the pioneer of, you know, that thing where people like zoom in on photos. Yeah, yeah. They were sat in here, weren't we? And we were doing quick fire questions. Yeah. Who was the best James Bond? George Lazenby. Butterfly or flutter by? Flutter by. Oh. Clock or doc? Clock. We're all just prattling about, weren't we? I'll, I'll be the interviewer. Okay. So, Jeff. Obviously, a very talented songwriter, Jeff Hewitt. Uh, where do you see your career progressing after you finish university? Catfish. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's all a bit Zoella, this, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Should we do a January favourites? What am I putting it for? <laughs> These are some trainers. I like them. So <laughs> all. My January favourite pick, this red mug. It's just so cute and it just fits in your kitchen just like this. And yeah. Use it as a coin jar. It's multifaceted. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good, warm. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Is it still warm? Is it yeah, warm? like, genuinely good. Just finished at ABC's now. Great day, actually. Always great to see him, always great to work with him. Now heading home, and hopefully I can get some more done there.
So I'm just getting ready to record the bass now. Tim and I made the improvements to it last night. Well, I basically made him do all the soldering, but it's now got a humbucker in it and I put some flat wound strings on it earlier. So actually, it's a lot better than it was. So yeah, I'm taking it on its maiden voyage to now record the bass on this track. The nature of chaos and the nature of things okay. like that. How many different songs can exist at this point? How many decisions have been made? So, first decision was the name. I mean, obviously, that didn't help. Oh, uh, yeah, that's quite a, yeah. quite a broad one. Um, then there was the poll on 60s psychedelic and 70s soft rock. Yeah. Then there was whether it be written on the acoustic guitar or the piano. Yeah. Dad's made the decision about the guitar. Yeah. So that's four. So it's two to the four, which is six, that's sixteen so far. Right. And then the name is is obviously yeah. How many different song names are there? <laughs> so it's sixteen multiplied by the number of words in the English language. Right. Okay. So quite a few different songs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can deal with that. Okay. I feel like there needs to be a phrase about um, you know the song finds a way. <laughs> well, there it is. There it is. I need to do the thing on, with the drops of water on your hand. Oh yeah, which way is it going to go? Which way is it going to go? I see, it's uh, it's uh, gone uh, differently this time. But you see, <laughs> You're uh, definitely paraphrasing that. Of course I am. Oh, it's well, maybe. Well, I don't know. I mean, whatever, man. I... The worst chaos station in the world. <laughs> uh, so how can I explain chaos theory to you? Right, I'm going to put water on your hand and. and uh, oh look! Oh. Oh yeah, look. So, I don't know. So what are you trying to say? <laughs> Dr. Ian Malcolm, what are you trying to say? I mean, let's be honest, right? Why is he there? Why is he in Jurassic Park? Yeah. Why did they get him in when they... They, they wouldn't have got a Chaos Station in if... Chaos Station? I know. They wouldn't have got him in, would they, if they thought it had gone well. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, it's they got him there to tell them that they shouldn't do what they're doing. No, absolutely. And it's just like, like oh well, we're gonna do it anyway. Spare no expense. Yeah, it's just like are they getting him in for like a second opinion? Is it like oh like a fourth opinion? You know, it's just like you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say. Hmm, what do you reckon this chaos station will say? Well, I think he'll say. I think they didn't say stop that this thing. is unpredictable. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, right, do do we need to get him in? No, this is it. And it's just like oh, do you? Uh, <laughs> What do you reckon he'll say? Maybe he'll say, oh, maybe they should have stopped to think about whether they should, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the bass guitar done. So I'm just gonna move on to the acoustic guitar now. Really happy with how this plays now. I think it's actually a great instrument. I think it sounds really good on the recording, which is always good. Right, decision time, Dad. Okay, I want you to walk into that room there, yeah. that one there, the, the one that you call your office. Yes. <laughs> I say that because, you know, it's obviously up for debate. <laughs> and I want you to tell me which guitar I'm going to record the electric guitar with. What? Okay, oh, there's two okay. in there. I'm going to walk in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use your... Use your um... Oh, well, it's, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Is it? I, I want it? Well, it is a no-brainer because I want this... Why? What? Well, really? It, well, that's it's my guitar. Right. Just to remind you, it's my guitar. And as soon as I don't play the blowing thing, I would like to. I would like to hear. Okay, uh, so you have selected. You have selected the Stratocaster. I have. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that was easy. Was that, do, you, do you want to pick it up symbolically then, for the sake of? Uh, yeah. Right. Do you want me to smash it? So to <laughs> Townsend. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Right. Thank that you, Peter. Thank you for your symbolic selection of that. That's great. Now, to most of you, that decision that my dad's just made about the electric guitar might seem totally arbitrary. But really, that was a, quite a big choice between two very different instruments. The Gretsch would have led to a more sort of Lindsay Buckingham, Fleetwood Mac style vibe with the electric guitar. But really, the Fender, the Fender type guitars, particularly the Stratocaster, really do lean towards the playing of people like Don Felder from the Eagles. So really we've got two very different brands of soft rock going on there. And now that I'm playing it with this, we're definitely going to get some classic kind of stratty sounds out of it. Which I'm quite excited for. I, I must admit, the Gretsch was the safer option uh, and this is uh, slightly more experimental. So hopefully we'll get something really good out of it. Hello, 
electric guitar is done. Sounds really good. It's quite late. I'm going to have to stop for the night, I think. But tomorrow I've got to finish the lyrics, do some vocal arranging, hopefully record that. And then we might be nearly done. Yeah. Does that make sense? Who knows? It's so late. I'm so tired. I have no idea. It's been a very long day, but we've, we've got things done. So, hooray. So it's just me today. Tim and Lizzie have gone back to university and mum and dad are out. So it's just me and the dog and he's not really saying a lot, I'll be honest. So I'm left to crack on with the lyric writing, sort of get that finished today and then hopefully move on to some of the final recording aspects, which I intend to do tomorrow. I know that kind of leaves it quite last minute, but I feel like the pressure is going to help in this situation just to bring out those last few bits. I've got to let someone else make a decision about something today, but I'm not really sure what that is. So hopefully that will come out over the course of the day, fingers crossed. Okay, so the question I've got to ask you is, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just distracted by the dog. Um, how many harmony parts should I put in this song? Uh, in fact, let me phrase it a different way. How many voices should I allow to record on this? Because in like normally in a band situation, you just mm -hmm. have as many people as were actually there. So like the Eagles had five people who could sing, so they might as well have five right. harmonies. So obviously when I'm tracking stuff on my own, mm -hmm. it's slightly different. So how many people should I have? How many people should I have in my hypothetical band? Well, until you said the Eagles, I was going to say four plus because of the Beatles. Yeah. Um, plus one for luck. Okay. So I was going to say five. So the Beatles plus one and the same as the Eagles. Okay, I fine. Think five would be is a nice sort of number. Really. Yeah, there we go. That would be good. Yeah, five it is then. Fine. Hurrah. I could deal with that. Lovely. So, five parts it is. Looks like I'm going to crack open Sibelius and see what happens. Welcome, lovely people, to the final day. Now, I know it sounds really bad, but I've actually lost all of my motivation at this point. This morning, I kind of got halfway through the Sibelius arrangement and I realised that maybe I could do it a bit more naturally. So I've written the parts that I need to and it's just a case of kind of improvising the rest. But I just seem to have lost my spark on the final day, which is really annoying because I've got so much to do. So I decided to come out for a bit of a break, go for a bit of a drive, and hopefully I'll feel better when I get back. It just so happens that we've run out of milk. So, so it's a good idea for me to go and get some milk, I think. And then when I get back, I can make myself a nice cup of tea. But in the meantime, I'm just going to enjoy the sort of slightly scenic drive out there, which is nice, I'll be honest. So, I've started to record the vocals and I'm getting into the swing of it now. I'm working on the bits I'm more comfortable with to start off with and I'm going to do the slightly more complex bits later on as my voice gets more warmed up. I'm really glad I went for a drive, it gave me a bit of a fresh perspective on the whole thing. So hopefully I can just carry on doing this and I can get it done in the next couple of hours. Okay, the vocals are done, which means that I've got to move on to mixing. I haven't got a huge amount of time to do this, but I'm going to crack on and hopefully the song will be done in the next couple of hours. Listening back to the mix at this point, it's really weird to think how different this song could have been. Just sort of reflecting on all the decisions that have been made, and sure, it might not seem like a lot of decisions, but actually all of them have been quite crucial decisions. Whether it was the decision to have five harmony parts or to write it on the acoustic guitar, all of them have made this song what it is. It'd be really interesting to know what it'd been like if I'd gone for all the opposite things. Maybe that's a song for another day. So here we are, another song done. Another song in seven days. 
I can't believe this is the fourth one I've done. Before I know it, this year will be over. Before I go, I'd just like to thank everyone who's been involved in this one. I couldn't have made this song without you, quite literally. Uh, but it's been great to have more people in this and get you involved in what I do. It has been tremendous fun. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. That was a big mouthful.